Hi there. Today on The Final Bar, we'll talk about a choppy market sort of distributing into the afternoon, but really chopping around in the last 30 minutes of trading. The volatility, the end of the day, sort of leaving the S&P not far from where it finished on uh, Friday, but plenty of distribution from some of the areas that we've thought of as, uh, as leadership uh, names, things like energy, financials, uh, all struggling today. But the, uh, the slack taken up by things like communication services will hit all of that and more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hi there, welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we key in on the, uh, the themes of the day through the, the technical analysis, through the charts, through the message that price can provide. If there is one thing that you look at, if you're trying to understand an asset class, a company, a, uh, a commodity, I would strongly argue that price is the number one thing, but beyond, you know, before supply and demand, before financial statements, the charts will tell you fact, which is where the price, uh, you know, has, where, where things have been transacted. You can't restate the price. You can restate a lot of other things. So the goal of, uh, of our show is to review where the trends have been and try to anticipate where the trends are headed. Your goal is to follow uh, the trends as much as you can anticipate those reversal points and uh, and and some asset classes. I'm thinking of gold in, in my head as I'm saying this. Really starting to turn around a little bit. And the question is, are these the beginning of something deeper or just a quick uh, head fake before resumption of the trend? We'll try to get to all of that here on the show today. Uh, we have some great guests, and we've been so fortunate to get uh, you know some real quality experts to come through the show and share their expertise, share their lessons learned, and uh, perspective on what they're seeing. This week we have Dan Passarelli. Uh, from Market Taker Mentoring, joining us on Tuesday to talk uh, in particular about the options market. Uh, Chris Vermeulen joining us for the first time on Wednesday, uh, the ninth from Technical Traders. And then on Thursday, Sentiment Day, a lot of sentiment reports come out. So Mark Young from Wall Street Sentiment is going to be joining us. Also, as a reminder, we have some special year-end events coming up all together called Reflections 2020, really looking back at a, a fascinating year, a difficult year. Uh, and uh, and a fascinating one from a from a market history perspective for sure. We have three uh, sort of suites of content we're gonna gonna share with you. Number one, we have ten charts over ten days, ten different experts giving you their top technical themes and reviewing them uh, in detail. Uh, second one is a look back at performance and how you measure your successes and your failures and uh, prepare for the upcoming year. And then the third section. Uh, all about sector rotation. We're going to have Julius de Kempner talk about sectors and then have uh, some strategists focus on one or two sectors in depth and talk about the themes you should be aware of. So it should be a really informative last couple of weeks of the year, setting us up for success in 2021 and beyond. Let's get to our market recap. So I mentioned it was a it was a choppy afternoon. There was some distribution. You know, we sort of had strength going into the close on Friday. We sort of reversed that and we're heading lower in the early afternoon. It certainly felt like it was more and more distribution during the course of the day, but plenty of choppiness there in the last 30 minutes. And obviously that's when a lot of institutions are placing bets. That's when a lot of ETFs are gonna be uh, making changes if they, if they need to. Overall, the S&P netted out to about down 0.2%. So just a, a, a bit below 3,700 remaining uh, in, that, uh, in that area. The Dow just above 30,000 still. Uh, down half a percent today. Mid caps and small caps down a little more than the S and P, but not too much. It was pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty broad uh, in the same uh, same area. The Nasdaq 100 actually up a half a percent. Communication services, one of the two sectors that was up uh, in a in a in a fairly strong way today relative to others, with com services up 0.7 percent today. That was the top of the 11 sectors. Looking at some other asset classes very, uh, very quickly, the dollar essentially flat uh, using the UUP as a proxy for the dollar index, the TLT up 0.9%. That's the long bond ETF, 10-year yields back down around 93 basis points. Commodities were, uh, were a pretty impressive story. If, if you look at uh, the charts and how they've uh, emerged from Friday to today, gold and silver 
uh, potentially breaking out. Maybe one of the better things to uh, to look at. I was looking at the chart of silver. This is the SLV, which is uh, the silver trust. A couple different ways to look at it. Uh, but if I take a trend line here using the um, the recent highs here, you can sort of see what I was looking at. That is the biggest trend line. We never need one that big. There we go. Here you can see I'm sort of fudging a trend line here, but you get what I'm saying. You sort of have this downtrend using some of these different highs. And depending on which one you use, if you sort of take that secondary one, we've we've broken above it. This is one of the, the blessing and the curse of trend lines is being able to fudge them a little bit. They're, they're sort of subjective, but you know, here you sort of have this downward track on silver and whether where, wherever you exactly put the line, you can see we've come up to this level and, uh, and failed a number of times. We're, we're back right up at that point, which means again, either silver powers through this and pushes to new highs, the RSI gets above 60, which would be much more of a bull market configuration than a bear market configuration, or this is a pretty perfect time for uh, a failure given the trend that we've seen up through uh, today. Looking at the GLD, we've talked about uh, this and I'm gonna share with you a, a little later, uh, an article I wrote uh, on Friday about gold stocks in particular, but the GLD was up pretty good today, about uh, one and a half percent. And you know, this is bouncing off around the 50% retracement level, taking the March low to the August high, pushing back above the 61.8% retracement level. And the question for me then, going through uh, tomorrow and the rest of the week, are we able to hold above that 61.8% retracement level? That'd be the first uh, step of sort of an illustration of a, of a recovering chart from a period of lower highs and lower lows, and trying to uh, trying to reverse that. So an interesting potential rotation in the metals. I think it's a little early on to uh, decide whether or not that uh, has some staying power. The chart of the S and P sort of looks like this, not too different from what we saw on Friday. And again, the 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 bigger picture is a rally into the September high, a period of consolidation for about two months as we have a narrowing of the range, lower highs, lower lows, that has been broken out. Whether you see this as a rectangle pattern, as a coil pattern, a symmetrical triangle of lower highs and lower lows, whatever, we were evolved around that 3,400 level and the midpoint broke above the upper end of that, broke out uh, to the upside and we've seen enough of a follow through that I think the path of least resistance certainly higher. Again, until proven otherwise, the trend, uh, the trend is your friend and the trend is, uh, is going upwards. In terms of sectors, so communication services, we've talked about the strength in some of those charts and I've mentioned some of them before. We'll look at a couple of them today, just illustrating some of the uh, impressive uh, uh, charts we're seeing there, just continued strength. Uh, I think what caught my eye over the weekend today, we're looking at some of the video game names, um, Activision, uh, Blizzard, EA, uh, Take-Two, these are stocks that kind of peppered up or boiled to the top of you know, impressive charts, so we're holding in there on a price basis and on a relative basis. Um, so we'll look at some of those. Utilities also have been, you know, sort of a dog of a sector, not really that impressive on a relative basis, but uh, regaining a little bit of that today, that's sort of coming off of a fairly depressed level, though, is the, uh, is the concern. Energy and financials down on the lower end, as well as materials, all gain, uh, losing a bit with energy down over 2%. That's certainly weighing on the, uh, the S&P overall. These are the groups that have pushed us to where we're at. I tell you where you have seen continued strength is with um, some of the airlines. This is AAL. And, you know, my question on Friday going into this morning was, you know, is that, was that just a, you know, a nice, you know, blow off to new highs, but, and, and is that sustainable? And I think what you're seeing on follow through days like today, when the S&P's sort of flat to down and American Airlines is up half a, uh, sorry, f almost 5%. Uh, pretty decent. I like the break above the August highs. I like the rally with something like AAL. You're looking back at um, the highs from June, certainly. We looked at this index uh, last week, the XAL, a little less impressive than American Airlines, but overall uh, doing okay. S essentially finished where it started on uh, Friday, but uh, overbought has had a nice run up there. And the question is, do we get a, a healthy pullback before resumption of the uptrend uh, for airlines? But overall, a nice, uh, nice move in AAL the top gaining uh, stock in the uh, in the scooter rankings today. Uh, let's continue on down here. It's an, an interesting mixed bag in the uh, in the scooter gainers, by the way. Netflix, which has been you know part of the Fang stocks that haven't really participated in the upside, actually coming to life today. Home Builders, which is a group we've talked about as as being uh, you know sort of negative. Lennar, Pulte Homes, Dr. Horton, all in the top. Uh, in the uh, in the top ten of uh, of gainers, so an interesting uh, an interesting uh, set of movements here. Looking at some of the different uh, the different charts on there. Let's uh, let's conclude our micro recap. Go into our second segment uh, sector setups. We've talked about sort of this overall you know sort of rally in stocks. The uh, path of least resistance being higher. Seeing the metals actually appreciate a little bit. 
we didn't get into the fixed income markets, but uh, but a bit of a change of a uh, character of sorts today with the TLT uh, up about one percent today. Let's look at the sectors and how they're rotating around the S and P. We're going to start with the RRG, the relative rotation graph. Julius De Kempner designed this years ago. Uh, check out his show Sector Spotlight if you want more information about how to use this methodology. But we're looking at the 11 sectors, how they're rotating around the S&P, which is at the zero line uh, there in the middle of the crosshairs. Um, this is a weekly view. I usually start with a longer term view just to understand the longer term relationships. And as you can see from the outlier over here on the left is energy really dramatically going northeast, the direction of appreciation and, uh, and, and continuing to improve on a relative basis and on a, a momentum basis, just sort of continuing to, uh, to rotate higher. Um, this is not something that's going to fluctuate a ton based on one day. So this is not really, you know, going to register a ton based on uh, being down two plus percent today. But overall, it's reflecting the, uh, the general rotation into energy stocks away from other things. And that's what you're seeing there. You're seeing the rotation away from things like real estate and consumer staples and utilities, all of which should not be too much of a surprise if you've been, uh, if you've been following the show. The strongest of the 11 sectors on the weekly view is industrials, the XLI here, which while it's, while it's heading south, which is sort of rotating in a more negative direction, it's furthest to the right, which means the relative performance has been the strongest. What's actually improving, sort of the most improved awards, it would be financials and communication services. And I'm not surprised looking at some of the charts that that's where you see some of the better opportunistic moves are in things like communication services as opposed to others which are a little uh, further on, things like industrials and, uh, and materials. On the daily view, we're gonna um, just step up the time frame a little bit. Here's where you'll see energy firmly in the far right side. So that shows you it's been outperforming. It's going straight down. Again, as long as, long as it's not going to the left, it doesn't concern me a ton. That just means it was a huge move on a relative basis to the upside. The momentum's coming off a little bit, that's okay. Um, and again, what you, wanna, what you wanna see if you're long energy or or, or hoping for that to go higher is to see a rotation over on this side and just keep rotating clockwise further to the right of the zero line. That's something just, uh, you know, sort of a cyclical up and downturns within a long-term stretch of outperformance. That would be the ideal scenario there. You can see financials, industrials, materials, all rotating a little weaker over the last uh, week. So what has been improving, as we mentioned, communication services, probably the most impressive uh, run. It's the only one of the 11 sectors now in the uh, improving quad, I'm sorry, in the leading quadrant. Uh, others over here, technology maybe number two, which is the XLK coming, uh, heading Northeast uh, over here. So it's sort of communication services, technology improving. Some of the uh, cyclicals that have gotten us to this point, rotating a little weaker, but still overall weaker momentum, but stronger longer term trend. Let's look at the uh, at the candle glance page. We can sort of spread out these, uh, these charts. Again, I, I sort of, attribute this to or, or compare this to what I would have done years ago, which is print out a bunch of charts, throw them on a table and just start putting them in piles. It's kind of what you're able to do with the candle glance uh, functionality. So you're looking at these 11 sectors and then the S&P and just trying to understand the longer term patterns. If you look at what uh, what most impresses, I, I'm immediately going to um, sectors that are above two upward sloping moving averages. And uh, as we go through the individual charts, you see that they're outperforming. Here's Com Services uh, with a relative strength at the upper end of the range, start, you know, continuing a nice uh, uh, stretch of, uh, of relative performance. You can see it's broken above the September peak and really accelerated to the upside. And, and that's why I think that's one of the better sectors right now. Technology's over here and it doesn't look bad. Don't get me wrong. It just doesn't look as good as uh, things that are that have had a, a nice uh, a nice follow through to the upside. Technology is broken out of this consolidation range, which I think overall is uh, is pretty good. You'd like to see get above the September high. So while communication services is sort of up here, having already followed through, technology is a little earlier, but certain pockets within there and semiconductors are, are the the top of mind uh, when I would think of that. Certainly, uh, you know, holding up very very well and having a nice run of performance. Let's check in on financials and uh, and again in terms of a chart that has gone from a non, you know, a non-winner to more of a winner, a relative underperformer to outperformer. I think the transition that you've seen in financials is, uh, is really impressive. Sort of a stagnant chart there uh, in the middle of the year over the summer months, you saw this range bound pattern between these two Fibonacci levels just seemed like a perfect framework for what we were seeing. And then that all changed there that uh, the beginning of November, you saw the gap above the June highs, the pullback and retest, and then the move back to the upside. I think Having followed through there, I think the path of least resistance is a retest of the previous highs, which means stocks like Morgan Stanley, uh, regional banks overall would more, most likely do pretty well in that environment. That lines up with sort of that 
increasing interest rate uh, scenario that we've talked about in recent weeks uh, as well. Uh, energy is over here. So when I think of financials, I think of energy as the other uh, as the other sector that's had you know a bout of relative underperformance. And you can see how the month of November totally changed things. So you really have to change your thinking with some of these charts and just focus on what the message is now. What I'm seeing with energy again, given a number of gaps here, this is on successive Mondays. You had these huge gaps higher, but overall continuing to be higher highs, higher lows, breaking above trendline resistance, back above the 200-day moving average. Boy, do you know your uh, candle patterns? We'll have to finish up here because we're, uh, we're running out of time. But let me show you this here. We'll look at the last six months. We will change this to a candle pattern. Do you know what candle pattern we're seeing today? Well, it's not the most ideal pattern, but I think it'll be good enough. This pattern right here, a big up day, a down day where the, uh, the range of day two is embedded in the range of day one. Sort of, it's like a bearish engulfing pattern, but instead of, but the, the, the ranges are flipped. So you have a, a longer first day and a shorter second day. It's actually called a bearish harami pattern. And uh, you probably don't need to know that unless you're studying for the CMT exams and, and good luck to all of you that are taking them this uh, last week into this week. I know it's right at that time and maybe you're brushing up on these. A bearish harami is where you have a big up day, a down day where the second day's range is engulfed by the first day's range uh, and short term negative. Uh, and, and that's kind of what it's suggesting, some uh, internal weakness here in the next for the next day or two. But overall, again, I think the pattern here out of the lows is what's impressive, right? Every time we move higher, we make a new swing high, we pull back, make a higher low. As long as that pattern continues on something like energy, I think you have to feel pretty good about uh, assuming, uh, assuming the path of least resistance is higher. That is Sector Setups. We're going to take a quick break back with our next segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. Uh, we had a lot of fun this morning. We, we, on Monday, we do a lot of our strategy meetings and uh, we were talking about the ACP platform and I created this chart. We were talking about uh, just different, uh, different thoughts about how we were gonna continue development. There's been a lot of really good um, improvements to this uh, platform over time. And we'll just keep thinking of how to, uh, to upgrade it. And so, you know, uh, also talking about sharp charts, we were talking about some, uh, some specific things we're gonna roll out uh, in the January, February timeline. But I created this chart just showing uh, United Healthcare relative to the S&P, UNH relative to its group, uh, which is healthcare providers, and then healthcare providers versus uh, the XLV, which is the healthcare sector. And, you know, just looking at different ways to think about relative strength of the scooter rankings at the very bottom, and just trying to think of different ways that we can, uh, you know, look at the relative strength profile in different ways, sort of come up with some chart combinations to uh, break that down on different time frames. So if you haven't checked out ACP, I'd certainly encourage you uh, to do so. And as questions come up, as you're using something like ACP, just as you're looking at names like UNH and uh, have questions on particular patterns, signals, indicators, how to use the charts, whatever it is, uh, just let us know. Shoot us an email. The final bar at stockcharts.com is the best way to get a question to us. Also on Twitter at final bar SCTV. Uh, just tag us in a comment or on our YouTube channel. Just put a comment right below the video you're watching. We'll do another mailbag segment on Tuesday's show, and we'd love to answer your question on the air. Our next segment is called Shifting Stocks. This is where we uh, complete the third piece. We've talked about the macro picture, looked at some of the sector themes. Now let's look at uh, shifting stocks uh, and, and particular names that are, uh, that are on the move. And I would encourage you when I'm going through these levels, you know, in a 30-minute in a show, we just have time to touch on some of the key charts that come up in my normal process. I hope you know that that is representative of a much deeper process that I'm doing on my own when we're not on the air. And I hope that it encourages you to develop your own process. What are the questions you were trying to answer as you cover those three areas as an equity investor? And, and where can you upgrade uh, some of the things you're, you're looking at every week? So I wrote an article for the Chart Watchers newsletter, which comes out on Saturday morning. So I wrote this uh, Friday afternoon. It's talking about uh, gold stocks. Uh, and, and basically talking about the downtrend that we've seen in gold. Gold was one of the better charts, and I you know, have been so impressed with the long-term profile of gold. It's just had this resilient 
uh, movement continuing to appreciate uh, over time, even, you know, and again, sort of contrary to what you might think from a risk, you know, quote unquote, a risk off asset or a safe haven asset. It's just done pretty well. That's all changed though in the last couple of months as stocks have uh, clearly gone higher and gold and silver have really struggled uh, coming from just breaking out to, you know, accelerating to the upside to sort of rolling over. And so one of the things I pointed out in the article, and I'd encourage you to read it, it's on my, uh, on my blog now, uh, The Mindful Investor. We're looking at the range on the RSI and, and you know, in general, you can talk about when a market is in a bullish phase and you see the RSI not really get below 40 and then a bearish phase when it rarely gets above 60. And that's what you're seeing with GLD and with the gold uh, contract, which is what was shown there on the top. Here's a chart of the GDX, which is the, uh, uh, the gold miners ETF. And, and you can see the transition from a bullish phase in the middle of the chart where I've highlighted in green, where the RSI is clearly in the bullish range, higher highs, higher lows, outperformance. And then the bearish uh, mode there in the right third of the chart, where you see lower highs and lower lows in the price, uh, you see the RSI remaining in the bearish range. You see the uh, the group underperforming the S&P 500. So where we left now, we're at that point where you've uh, continued this pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You've broken down through the 200-day, now testing it from uh, below. And we're right at that 38.2% retracement of the March to, uh, to August high. What's interesting is uh, today you've had a nice acceleration in some of these gold stocks. So the GDX uh, up about 3.4 or so percent. Uh, and, and again, the, the story hasn't changed yet. I think it's all about still how it's able to trade around these levels, but certainly bouncing now off of the 38.2% level back above the 200-day moving average. And what we talk about are just some of the, the bullish tells that you would need to see. That's step number one. The other ones are the RSI to get back into the bullish range, the relative strength profile to start to improve. So you can see how, uh, you know, the trend overall in the relative strength still, you know, sort of uh, weaker rather than stronger. You'd love to see this be the beginning of something uh, more positive. You see the RSI start to get above 60 on an upswing. So you'd like to see that accelerate uh, more on. So this is step one of three. Uh, and this is the chart that we were uh, that we were looking at as I uh, as I wrote the article. So check out the article. You can see the chart of the GDX. But that's the first segment I wanted to just talk. Or first first uh, set of charts I wanted to look at with just the gold names really in a, in a rate in a cyclical downtrend, but you know potentially starting to pop up a little bit. I mentioned uh, communication services when we were looking at the uh, at the sectors. And I, I was impressed over the weekend looking at the uh, the video game stocks, things like Activision, Blizzard, um, EA, T T T T. Uh, well, take two T T W O. Uh, don't try to say that too fast. Here's the chart of uh, Activision Blizzard, and what what I'm impressed with here is if you look at the trend line, taking the August high, connecting that to the October and November highs, you can see we broke above it on Friday. So as I was looking over the weekend, I'm thinking, wow, it's actually a really nice trend line breakout. Now you want to see how it does relative to this congestion area here. Uh, today, we've sort of continued that breakout and gone up to that same range. So, so overall, again, I think you know, this is now rotating from weaker to uh, stronger. You see the RSI, thinking of the chart of the GDX, you see how the RSI here is now above 60, which is what you want to see when uh, you see something accelerate to the upside. And again, you want to see that relative strength profile continue to uh, improve. So Activision looks uh, looks pretty good uh, in terms of uh, potential of coming out of a, a weaker place. Uh, Electronic Arts, same thing. If you connect some of these highs, you can see we're just breaking above the, uh, the trend line. Uh, T, uh, take two is even uh, further on. A little different look than those other two charts, but I like the, uh, the break above the August highs uh, and a little bit of a, a further upside here. So a lot of the communication services stocks up pretty good today relative to the, uh, to the market. And I think that's why they're uh, bubbling to the top. We talked about the FANG stocks and some of the weakness there. And again, I think, uh, you know, focusing on some of those names, I remember talking with uh, Ari Wald, that was last week, I want to say, or maybe the week before. And we were talking about, you know, the FANG stocks that concern you that the market's rallying with things like energy, financials, and uh, and, and banks, and, and, and things like the FANG stocks are left behind. His comment was, I think we could see the FANG stocks sort of reemerge and, can, and jump in. And when they do, that's what could provide an acceleration to the upside. And, and that's certainly something that, uh, that could happen. I think that's what you'd be looking for. With the chart of, uh, of Alphabet, you know, for me, I think it's about this uh, horizontal line. This is the high from September. You can see we broke above that and now retested it from above. And now it's holding above there. That line holds. I think you can feel pretty good about, uh, you know, again, not about incredible upside for these names, but the lack of incredible downside. I think when these stocks start breaking down through 
uh, that sort of uh, breakout level. When you see trend lines off of the lows being broken, I think that's when you'd have to feel a little more like tapping the brakes uh, risk-wise, but overall uh, still holding up okay. And I think you have a clear breakout level on something like uh, Alphabet to pay attention to. Um, I mentioned Netflix staying in the uh, communication services sector. You know, Netflix, a nice bounce today up three and a half percent. Again, it's still coming on the lower end of this range. If you think of Netflix for me, Netflix is like a big box, which is about as exciting as it sounds. If you do this and kind of uh, lighten up the shading a little bit, uh, you know, you can just sort of see this range. It's sort of at the upper end around 570, 580, the lower end around 460. We just keep rotating between there. So yes, I'm impressed that it's bouncing off the lows. That's great. The next time it gets down to the 200, it gets down to that range. I think it would be reasonable to expect a bounce higher. I think that's all fair. But at some point, you'd want a stock like this to break out of this range and indicate the, the future direction. And, and that's what we've not gotten on Netflix, sort of rallied up until this point. Since July, it's been range bound, right? And, and so I think you'd want to see that range uh, break. So a nice run higher today on Netflix. I think with those two charts, you're sort of in okay mode. You're not in great mode and you're not in bad mode. And I think looking for that to, uh, to change would be important. Finally, and then just to wrap and uh, finish our show here, I, I screened for stocks making new 13-week uh, lows today. Not many. Uh, and the only ones that I'll, uh, I'll just highlight, there are only five of them in the S&P 500. Home Depot, number one. Note the relative strength going to the downside. The RSI right at the point where you might expect a bit of a, of a bounce off there. If you think of the Netflix chart, it's very similar. Netflix just bounced off of the lows. I'd be curious to see if Home Depot is able to do the same. Uh, AMT is one you may or may not be familiar with. It's, a, it's in the uh, specialty REIT group within the real estate sector. What, what does not impress me here is the R, RSI sort of in that continuing in the bearish range, making new lows, uh, relative strength going downwards uh, very quickly. BBY, Best Buy was number three. Price and relative strength depreciating. D is Dominion Energy within utilities. Now, this one's sort of right at support. Um, so I'd be interested to see if that's able to hold, but overall, uh, underperforming in the McDonald's, and you can see the relative strength here. So my reason for pointing these out is the common thread on all five of these is this relative strength line going down for the last four to six weeks. I would encourage you as you're screening for stocks, making sure you're looking at those and, and being underweight or away from those types of names that are underperforming is going to help you overall. It's not about just hitting the home runs and being in what's worked. It's not being in what's not working. That also helps your overall uh, performance. We need to wrap this show. Three charts, three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is the GLD, the gold ETF. I wrote that article over the weekend about, you know, gold overall being in a downtrend and three steps to, uh, to determine whether that downtrend was over. Step number one arguably happened today, or at least it's starting, which is a nice rally off of the lows and getting back above the 61.8% retracement level. The second level, the second item would be the RSI in a more bullish configuration and then the relative strength improving. Those things we have not seen yet, and that's what I'd be watching. Chart number two is communication services. I like sectors and stocks that are working on a relative basis. Com services is broken above its September high, has accelerated to the upside. I like the fact that the relative strength is going up. And it's not just the sector, which obviously has big mega cap names like, uh, like uh, Alphabet, like Netflix and others. I'm impressed with the other stocks, things like video game uh, uh, stocks that are performing very well on a price and relative basis. I'd be looking for those opportunities with what is leading a leading sector. Finally, the XBD, we didn't talk a lot about financials, but I always like pointing out examples when people say something's overbought, shouldn't it, you know, isn't that a sell? And my answer is look at the XBD, which went overbought in early November and has continued for the next three to four weeks, continuing higher, both in, both in price and in relative strength. So don't think that just becomes something's, because something's overbought, that that's the end of the move. A lot of times that happens at the beginning of the move and that's an indication of an acceleration to the upside. More often than not, I think you wanna follow those sorts of trends, especially in an environment like now where you see plenty of stocks uh, trying to make new highs. Folks, that's our show for today. Thanks so much for joining us on a Monday afternoon to break down the key themes from over the weekend. I hope you can think about your own uh, process about how you're reviewing charts and reviewing uh, your own signals and make sure you have a good routine of doing that consistently. As a reminder, there are some really good special events coming up at the end of the year, part of our Reflections 2020 series. I'm going to be recording very soon uh, my own contribution, which is talking about how you look at your performance over the year and plan for better performance for next year. So I hope you will join me, Gaddis Rose and others, for some really cool uh, conversations there. 
As a reminder, give us your questions. The, the final bar at stockcharts.com. Let us know what's on your mind. For stockcharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a good night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.